It's Mr. Atka, and in the next few videos, we're going to be looking at cycles and ecosystems. The standards that we're covering are going to be 7.3.1, 4, and 5. If you'd like to look at the standards, you may pause the video right now and do so. To begin with, we're going to be looking at the water cycle. The water cycle can also be called the hydrologic cycle. Water itself both two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. And it constantly cycles out the environment over and over. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's slow. Here's what I mean in video. Cycle will water storage and participation. And run. And there are a few others that I've put up on the site, but I will do this. To begin with, water is stored mainly in the ocean. The ocean makes up 96.5% of all total, total global water. Fresh water only is up 2.5% of total water. That means water that we'd be able to drink without getting sick due to saline intake. That 2.5% of fresh water, well, 68.7% of it is actually trapped in glaciers and ice caps. 30.1% is underneath the ground. 1.2% of that is surface or water. And out of that, 0.2% of us are fresh. 69% of that is exactly like as ground ice or permafrost. So a very tiny portion of the water that we're able to drink is actually readily able to drink by us. So to begin with, we talked about that, that ocean tank majority of the water found on our surface. Well, it doesn't just magically get into the atmosphere. We have to have a driving force to start our fire cycle. That driving force is the sun. The sun causes water in the oceans, barely, to evaporate. That evaporation happens whenever the water molecules are excited and they change from the liquid state. And this is the state of matter, a liquid, that changes to a state of water known as water vapor. So as the molecules are excited, they expand and they expand, they rise. So, pardon the bell, as water vapor expands and rises into the atmosphere, it's called evaporation. And this is the primary pathway that water moves from a liquid state back to the water cycle in the, term, in the form of water vapor. But you have to have the heat energy for the sun to cause this to happen. Now, heat water does a couple of different things. If you excite water molecules up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll actually boil, and then from there it'll turn to water vapor. But it will also at lower temperatures, but it doesn't cause the water to boil. And if you take away energy, and adding energy, that's the boiling, take away energy, that'll cause freezing, and that happens at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So evaporation, water goes up, and it'll start to do something once it gets a little bit higher into the atmosphere. But water doesn't always go just from a liquid to a gas. It can go from a frozen state, frozen water is called ice, it can actually go through something called sublimation, where you have frozen water in the form of a ice cap or, yeah, I would say ice cap is probably the easiest way, or a glacier. Sometimes it won't actually melt into a liquid. Letter of that eight, 
sometimes it'll sublimate directly from the solid to a gas. Now, that might be hard to think about dry ice. It's not water, but dry ice goes from a solid to a gas, and that creates all the smoke that dry ice gives off. So sublimation can happen with glaciers where it goes straight from a solid to a gas whenever something's causing it that state that change of state. You also have something transpiration. The transpiration happens whenever ground goes directly from the ground to the air, and that's again through sunlight. It causes the water that's in the ground doesn't change to a liquid state, it just what's well, in a liquid form in the ground, but it causes the liquid to go straight from the ground to the atmosphere. And you also have a transpiration. Oh, got those swapped up. Transpiration happens through leaks, and evapotranspiration happens through the door. Mr. Adcock makes mistakes. We'll try and push past those. So evapotranspiration. That's the ground to the atmosphere. Then transpiration is plants have to go through them with their leaves. Next up, looking at condensation. So on the diagram or the background a bit, you see flora and fauna means plant. So that is how you Transpiration, you also have a bit of transpiration. So you can have plants in the flora having water vapor go through the doors. You can also have evapor evapotranspiration going from the ground into the atmosphere. So you have water in the atmosphere turning into a diagram is shown whenever it motions. So the water gets heated up, it rises. As water rises, as you go up in the atmosphere, in this layer of the atmosphere that we're wet, as you go up, it cools. So as water gets cooler, the energy found in the molecules lessens and lessens and lessens. That energy dissipates, it causes the water from a gas to form back into a solid, well, not a solid, but a liquid form. And that process is called condensation. And I don't understand that, but think of your water bottles that you have maybe on your desk now. Kids like to think of the outside water bottle gets wet, but it's not true with the process of sweating. Water's not even through the plastic and coming on the outside. It's actually temperature of the water being lower than the temperature of the air around it and causing the water vapor in the air to cool off and condensate on the outside. In the atmosphere, as water goes up, it cools off and back into a liquid state. So lots of energy is water and forms clouds and fog. Over time, as these clouds have more and more water in them, they reach something called a saturation point. When the saturation reaches, it causes water to, to boom, come back to the earth's surface. And that's precipitation. Precipitation is any form of water leaving the atmosphere and reaching Earth's surface. So the, the form of rain, freezing rain, sleet, and hail, what rain is, um, all water as it's in the atmosphere is in a frozen state. It depends on the ambient air temperature. That means the air temperature right? as it comes back to Earth's surface, what shape and form it takes. So rain is one of to actually turn the sled back to with freezing means that it's solid liquid and freezes its 
is her surface. Sleep is a mixture of and in an usually will form they are crystallized form of the surface. Hail happened at the time when everybody's strong up draft again. That's a really, really moisture laden to go up a high atmosphere really fast. The flash freezes and comes back down in really solid amounts from frozen water. It can be as small as maybe pink, as big as cow. Very in size. We've got um, the ocean water, the calcium, concentrated, and it's got a couple routes that it takes. In terms of elevation. So, what I mean by is that it runs down here. That makes sense, right? So, we're going from elevation to elevation. So, of course, the driving force of that is gravity. So, water reaches higher points of elevation and goes to lower elevation. Water runs. Under high elevation, you got a water. Now, water can be as big or small as, for example, a foot. If you have a picture for the mud and it's raining, water fill up that hole. That makes sense. Well, think about it on a large scale where you have you have clouds or you have elevation to lower elevation. Watershed on a large scale would be the Mississippi River. The points in the United States, central area, has water on it. And over time, it goes, even if it's a soak in it'll all pull back into the Mississippi River. And there it goes to the Mississippi River ocean because those things are going to lower the ocean in the Mississippi River. So that's the watershed. So it runs off to precipitate get absorbed into water evaporate. So ice and glaciers provide runoff and melt. And we have also protection that's not. Gravity causes can make it into rivers, lands, and oceans. Now it can do things in the So filtration has where water just go drain infiltrate through the soil. So sometimes it doesn't as complicated as it is to cause the water funnel directly to a river. Sometimes it can be loosely packed, water can get through it. Or water can be something called a porous rock. The term porous means it has holes, and these holes have to be big, but they're just big enough to allow it to go through the rock. And Water. Sometimes it'll be underwater, and this is like out in the center of the state. People might have waste, or they might have to into the underground ops that provide the water to be drunk. It just may evaporate, but it's underneath the surface that provides constant source of rainwater. Now, either how we're water is from over time, it will settle back to the high concentration. We will from that back. back. Now, it can take time. You have the flood, the mountain, the side of the mountain, the river, the river. Thousands, millions of years. If it's thrown up on top of a mountain, as a, oh, as a 
people, or it's just in a state of fear. Every time, fear will always raise up. Now, as ocean will evaporate, it'll come out. Over time, the signal from clouds fire. Over time, that ocean it'll come better surface for water. What I'm at is fast can be slow. Water will always go back to side. There's no water to be created. Water is not stored. Some kids think it'll think up, but to joke around and a cup of water that is tank. Once a time, that could have been a little bit. Meaning, sure, you're running to the ground. Maybe the ground purifies it of minerals. That'll end up and go into the ground for an underwater for water. Maybe one day more. There's a stream. The stream goes over that river to the ocean. And, and over, over. done by what? There's never true story, nor is it ever truly remade. It changes state. Changes state, it becomes human consumption and consumption and plant over and over and over. Whenever you're on your plant, that's a just there. The plant, but the ground becomes saturated to a point. That water travels to the ground. To the underground means of water transfer. It will end up in the one day in the land of the atmosphere. 